Uh, where to start? I want to talk a little bit about conformity, and it relates, I realize, to this idea of can brains run programs. Okay. Um, I think when we're really talking about our will and intention and, and you, uh, that's not something that is a program that can be run by someone, by some other brain, really. I mean, it can and it can't be, in my view. Really, you know, anything in my brain is, is me, but I do sort of think that I can get an impression of another person's idea and of their personality, and it can form in my head, and that, in a sense, is a copy of their personality. It's just that I'm running it. I'm, I am this computer, so whatever I run is, is me. If, if I were to run somebody else's idea, it's still me doing that. Now, when I was younger especially, I was really, really always bothered by group think and conformity and the way that people act when they're in groups. And, you know, I was never antisocial, and I like the social lubrications of, you know, being polite, and, you know, so it was hard for me to put a finger on what really bothered me, but over time, you know, I realized it was the way people would be fake. People actually would give up their individuality and their actual opinions that they had to, to the group for based on social motivations. And that always really bothered me. Okay, so it still, it still does bother me. But I came to really despise groups in general. Just, you know, I, I cannot stand to watch the way people work together socially. And um, this gave me, you know, a bias against groups. But then as I matured, and I always had a respect for the great engineering works of mankind, and I started to realize, wait, it takes groups of people to do these things, you know, and it turns out if you want a thousand uh, hands working, you know, if you want 500 pairs of hands working to build something together, then you have to deal with 500 emotions, and there's nothing disgusting or wrong about that, and some of the politics, really, whatever it takes is just simply that, it's whatever, it's, it's whatever it takes, and in a way, you can't begrudge that. And I've come back to having an appreciation. So where I started really being disgusted by the way groups think, I came back to really realizing, wait a second, I am just in stunned in awe of the way groups of people act together. Okay. But it's a different perspective. I, I am in awe of how they can act when they act in a healthy way together to a common purpose. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm impressed by the way everybody can have their own personal purpose in addition to this common purpose. And yet I'm still disgusted by the way people act, you know, socially and give their mind over to other people's ideas. Now that's what I look for online. I look for people that actually have their own ideas. If somebody's being honest and giving their own ideas, much more, you know. I mean, sure, I could come on here wanting people to be honest because I wanted facts, but people don't know the facts and the truth. So the value of them being honest is not that then they're going to give me the truth. They're still just giving me what they think is the truth. And whether that's the truth or not, you know, is, is yet to be determined. But what it tells me is that they have the character to be an individual. And... Um, and I believe that when you take that approach to life, the character to be an individual, that you progress, okay? And so I like to see people on this path of progress. But really, we have to, you have to leave mankind, you have to leave the womb of mankind, the conceptual womb, uh, all of the things it tells you about how special it is to be human, about how your ideas are like, gifts from God, and they're pure, and the beauty of your soul, and your goodness, and it's, you're so much more than any other animal, and all of these things that pollute our self-conception, that are based on us being in this group uh, of, of all of us patting each other on the back, you have to walk away from that, you have to go off into the jungle, metaphorically speaking, the philosophical jungle, and become an individual, before you can come back to mankind, come back to the group, and 
be a truly um, positive citizen uh, for what mankind and this planet needs in the future. You come back with uh, appreciations rather than ho how you hobbled away on a bunch of crutches. You, know, you, you have to learn to think for yourself. You cannot take comfort in the fact that somebody agrees with you. You have to be suspicious if somebody agrees with you. You have to triple check your facts if somebody dares agree with you. Okay. Because as soon as you're all agreeing, the fact checking quality goes way down. So you're going to have to step it back up. You're going to have to learn how to, to think for yourself and, and free yourself from these perspectives where we care so much what, what other people uh, think or even say. You know, you have to react, but you don't necessarily have to take things so seriously to heart. That's part of your, your group animal nature, that, those, those heartstrings where, you know, you can be manipulated by your desire to fit in. Now, I never really had much of a desire to fit in. I have been in situations where I wanted to, to fit in or be accepted. So I understand the emotion, but I never had a strong desire to fit in, and it always bothered me I, when I would see in, in school how so much bullying was based on manipulating people by their desire to fit in. You know, pre people pretending to like someone just to draw them in for a more even crueler rejection in the end. And these kinds of things. And, you know, part of me was like, oh, you shouldn't want to fit in. That's the part that you have to, you know, take responsibility for. But a much, a much stronger hate was for the people that would manipulate that. But I found also if you want to be too much of a rebel, you want to be a rebel rebel and just contradict the society all the time, you're, you can also be manipulated that way through reverse psychology, through wanting to not fit in. So again, this is where if you walk away from society, you can realize, I don't want to be a conformist, but neither do I need to be a nonconformist. I need to set that stuff aside and be the way I need to be. And if it fits some of their, uh, some of their rules, it's not conformity, it's coincidence. And I can figure out for myself where I lie. And without being locked into being a conformist or a nonconformist. When we open up people's emotions towards other people, we, we feel like we're accessing them on a deeper level. And it is deeper, and it's, it's close in, and some of this is natural. But we don't ever have to be slave to any of it. And um, whatever it takes, um, whatever it takes, we all need to go through a transition where we free ourselves from the slavery of a conformist way of thinking about things. You know, ways where we give the authority of our thoughts over to other people because of whatever reason. And we need to keep the authority over our thoughts. Regardless of, uh, regardless of how the story turns out. You know, regardless of if, if I'm right that there's willpower or not, I need to have control of my thoughts. Whatever I do believe, I need to know why I believe it. And it can't be, well, because of someone else, it's because of an expert or a tradition or a standard that is a social standard. It has to be something I personally can speak to. And even if it's half-assed, that is better and will serve my progress better than some expert argument that is just repeated by me without even understanding it from, you know, a socially accepted explanation.